So the purpose of this second video is to go over in a little bit more detail how the layout mode of the Horizon Link Embroidery Link tool works. Um, so you will remember if you watched video number one and if you uh, recall, I had gone briefly through most of these sections of the Embroidery Link tool. And I believe in that first video, I also had spent uh, fairly a good amount of time just talking about the editing embroidery designs. So first of all, I just want to mention once again that the difference between editing embroidery designs and layout mode is all about hoops. So what I mean by that is editing embroidery designs is whenever you create a layout, small layout, um, that will fit into one hooping to basically be embroidered all at one time. So the size of the embroidery design is going to be limited by what can fit actually inside of the selected hoop that you have chosen. On the other hand, layout mode is going to be based basically on how many pieces of paper you can use, um, and that would be eight and a half inches by 11 inch paper that you can set up and you can start plopping your embroidery designs onto that. And what you will be doing is you will be creating what we call a layout. And the layout is simply going to be a picture um, of the various embroidery designs that you have incorporated into one layout to be embroidered out using separate hoopings to accomplish a very large um, embroidery design. So typically when people are going to use the layout mode, what you really are looking at doing is probably trying to make yourself um, a large embroidery design, um, maybe for example, a wall hanging or a table runner, maybe a very large cushion, something of that nature where you really want to have a nice large embroidery design that looks like it was all embroidered at one time, but in fact, you've had to do it in multiple hoopings. So that is what the main difference is between the regular um, embroidery edit screen and the layout mode. All right, so you can see that I selected my layout mode and I have um, a picture open here on the screen that you can see. And I, first of all, before I make any changes on the setup for this layout mode, I just want you to notice that when it opens up and you have not used this program before, it's always going to open up with two pieces of paper. How do I know it's two pieces of paper? Because I'm looking at two different things here on the screen. First of all, I'm noticing that here in the layout tab mode, I can see that my pieces of paper are set up in the portrait um, orientation, which basically means this is your eight and a half inch dimension, and this is your 11 inch dimension. Right here, I can see that I've got two pieces of paper. The reason why I know that is here in the layout mode setup screen, I can see that it's saying I have two pieces horizontally, one piece vertically. So here's my piece number one, and here's my piece number two. Now, how big of a design would this create for you? This would be eight and a half inches wide, two times, which brings you up to 17 inches, and it would be about an 11 inch high um, capability here. So we'd be looking at a 17 inch by 11 inch um, design field. Well, as I mentioned before, you probably are going to want to use this uh, layout mode to create yourself some nice big embroidery designs. And what I'm going to try to do on my particular layout design is I'm going to come up to my pages. Remember again, pages means eight and a half by 11 inch pieces of paper. And I'm going to change mine to three pieces of paper wide. Did you see when I clicked on that, that it added in that extra piece of paper? You can see the divisions, um, and they are marked here by a very light red dotted line. And I'm going to make my vertical orientation two pieces high. Um, because what I believe what I'm going to make is I'm going to make a basically a table runner. Um, and I think I'm actually going to change this into a landscape mode. So when I selected the landscape mode, um, again, on a video, it might be a little bit difficult to see, but what has happened is it's turned my pieces of paper sideways. So now my eight and a half inch dimension is going vertically. My 11 inch dimension is going sideways here. So 11 inches times three gives me about a 33 inch design field and my eight and a half inches 
two times is going to give me about a 17 inch design field. So my table runner could potentially be um, a little bit about 17 inches wide by about 33 inches long worth of embroidery designs if I decided I wanted to put that many designs into it. So many of the tools that you're going to be using in the layout mode are very similar, um, if not exactly like what we were using in the embroidery um, first video that I made about the embroidery edit screen. We're going to have a home tab and when we open our home tab we're going to see again that there are the very same um, icons that we had available to us on the embroidery edit mode. Some of them are going to be grayed out until we have first done something that will make them activated. Uh, we've got an edit mode and again edit mode is going to be our features where we can copy and paste designs, where we can undo and redo things when we've made mistakes or when we're trying to make design decisions. Um, once we've got designs on our actual screen, we will be able to use our vertical and horizontal mirror tools. Um, we'll be able to change colors. We'll be able to add lettering in and alter it a little bit. And then we will be able to use these centering and cornering tools as well as um, over here on the left hand side, the copy and paste and the delete. Those will only be available, obviously, when we've got designs that we're actually working with. And then in our view tab, this is going to come in quite handy, uh, especially when you're working in the layout mode, because as you can see, this is where I'm defaulted at right now. This is um, a lot of pieces of paper that we can't see a whole lot of. If I scroll up and down a little bit here, you're going to see that I would have to use my toolbars in order to get um, zoomed in on some of the areas. So you probably will want to use your zoom in and zoom out tools quite a bit as you're working in this layout mode. All right, so I zoomed out just now in order to so I can see my six pieces of paper that are indicating my design field. Um, the other thing that you're going to notice in your layout mode that you probably, um, I'm almost 100% going to guarantee you, you're going to want to keep on is your grid over here on the right hand side. You probably will want to keep it as either um, solid lines or dotted lines, whichever one you feel like you like better. I like solid lines personally. And more than likely, I don't believe you'd probably want to turn your grid off because one of the things you're going to be doing quite a bit as you're working with layouts is you're going to be using these grids to help you keep the different elements of your designs lined up together um, in order to get a nice cohesive design. So you probably want your grid turned on. And um, over here in your layout um, or your view tab, you've also got your design list that you're going to want to have turned on. This is it over here on the side. And of course, you remember, you can drag it and move it around if you want to. Uh, and this is going to be where once you bring start bringing in your embroidery designs, they're going to be populated here so that you can see them as the, um, the different elements that have been opened up and inserted into your design. Remember that down here on your status, this is your status bar. Status bar. Status bar is down here telling us we're in the layout mode. The hoop that has been selected so far, because I have not changed it, is the square 23 hoop for my 15,000 sewing machine. And right now it's telling us that we have zero designs in here. Okay, so um, the next step actually is to go back home. And when you have opened up this program, I don't know if I actually mentioned it to you, but when we were first doing that setup, this embroidery edit mode was actually um, able to be manipulated. Right now, because I navigated away from that home tab in order to show you uh, some of the other tools, I am no longer able to play with my edit, embroidery edit mode. And what that means for me right now is that I can no longer change from this setup that I initially created. Um, I've got my three wide by two high pieces of paper and the hoop that has been selected was the square 23 because I did not change it. Now what that means for me is that when I start opening embroidery designs I'm going to be limited to designs that will fit into the square 23 hoop. I will not be able to insert any designs that are larger than the square 23 hoop into this design. So one of the things that I um, almost always do other than of course right now that I was starting off on this design is that I always will select 
my largest hoop because that will keep me from being limited by um, what size of designs I can insert here. And when I am starting out from scratch, um, I just kind of like to keep my options open. And that is why I would prefer to have gone ahead and not made the mistake I did. So I'm changing back to landscape mode. I'm again, three pieces of paper wide by two high. This time I am gonna be careful to select my hoop layout side. And I am gonna choose my GR hoop because I wanna be able to open any design that I might decide I want to put into this design field. Now my pages are actually set up like I want them for my project. And it's okay for me now to go ahead and come on over to my home button or the edit buttons or any of the other ones. Again, I'm back on the home screen. You're gonna see that those options to play with the settings for how big this layout is gonna be have now been uh, grayed out, which means that I cannot change. Okay, so just like we were um, able to do when we were in our regular embroidery link tool, we can begin to insert designs into this field and we um, can gather those designs from basically any place on our computer that we have embroidered designs saved. Remember once again that they will have to be Janome format designs, which means that they need to be JEF format, um, JPX format, and DST will, I think, also work in this design field, although I have not tried it, so don't make me swear to that. Um, the other day when I was making the first video about the embroidery link tool and the Horizon Link Suite, I was having a little bit of difficulty with um, my design folders opening up quickly, and I'm still having that difficulty. So you will notice I'm having some lag time here when I select the design field before my options begin to open up. So once I have selected that design folder, once again, it's going to take me first of all to the built-in designs that are in the Horizon Link Suite program, and those are the designs that are built into our embroidery machines. The only difference that I have in this design folder than what you may have is that one of the folders that I added into um, the program file, and that is in the Janome uh, program files in your section of your C drive that is called Program Files Times 86 Janome Horizon Link Suite is I added in these embroidery couching designs. And those are designs that came um, along later on after the machines had been developed. And they were specifically created to be used with the embroidery couching feet that come as an added accessory. So that's the only difference between my design folder and what you may have on yours is that I did add that into the program file. Um, I just want you to also always remember that you've got these navigation tools on your sidebar over here on the left hand side that if you decided you wanted to use um, some embroidery designs from a different place in your computer or maybe even on a C or a D drive that you might have had um, an external drive for CDs or something of that nature, they would be listed over here on the left hand side of the screen. All right, so here are the design folder. Everything that's listed here are the same things that are listed here. And I can open them up and choose what I want to work on. My computer, actually, in my document folder is where I have my own personal embroidery folder. And so if I chose to use designs from here, one of the things I could do is just come to my folder and select my category of designs that I might want to use and um, open them and insert them. Again, just remember, they do have to be Janome format designs, okay? JEF, JPX, or um, I think DST. I think I mentioned that a while ago that I have not actually tried them. So as I begin to work on my layout, I am not going to go into great detail about an actual layout design that I'm going to plan to make. I'm just going to give you some tips on inserting designs and doing some different things with uh, your embroidery layout. Okay. So I'm going to come to one of the folders here, and I think probably I may decide to just open up the world of embroidery designs. And I'm going to just probably look at some designs that are rather on the small side. Um, I don't, again, I don't really have anything much planned for what I want to do with this layout. I'm just going to start plopping some designs in here. I think I kind of like the look of this little 
vine with a bird. So notice when I first click on it and it opens up, it's going to open up exactly in the middle of my design field, just like it did when we were in the embroidery link um, edit mode. In this case, what the exact middle of my design means is the middle of all of those pieces of paper. So here it is, and it's a rather cute little design that has some birds and some flowers. I'm going to duplicate this design so that I can put this in the middle of my embroidery design. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to make sure that it is selected, which means it has the green boundary box around it. I'm going to use my view tab and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so that you might possibly see that a little bit better. And I'm now going to uh, go to my edit. I'm going to copy and paste it. And remember, whenever we copy and paste, a couple of funky little things happen. It copies and pastes it exactly on top of the original one. So you cannot tell by looking at the screen here that there's actually two of these designs here, but there are. And the way that you can verify that is over in the design list, you can actually see the two that have been created. So the second one is the one that has the green boundary box around it, and it also is highlighted here in the design list with the blue um, background around it. What I want to do with this is I'm going to use my vertical mirror tool which means I'm going to flip it horizontally. And then I am going to do one of two things. In order to position it right next to the original one, I can either click on it and I can drag it if I want to move it quickly, or I can use the arrow buttons on my keyboard. If I use the arrow buttons on the keyboard, I'm going to get a more accurate uh, placement of these two designs being exactly side by side. The main problem with doing it this way is that, as you can see, the design is beginning to move on the screen, but it's extremely slow. And um, if you're not a patient person, this could actually cause you to have some, uh, maybe a little bit of anxiety because it can be very slow. And the other thing about it is that as your design progresses and you begin to get more and more um, embroidery designs on this layout mode, it will slow down even more. But Many times I, I still like to go ahead and use the little slow pokey method of using my arrows and it is simply because I do like to be accurate. And then the other thing about it, I've just finished moving that into the position that I want it. I'm going to select the next one. Excuse me for interrupting myself. Selecting it. Again, you can see that it's highlighted in blue here. The boundary box is now around the original first one. And I'm going to use my arrow buttons again and just drag it on over. Um, and as I was saying that I typically prefer to do it this way even though it is slow because it just gives me that accurate placement. I haven't played with the vertical alignment of these designs. I'm just moving them side to side horizontally. So what I'm anticipating is going to happen here is once I get this in the position that I want it and what I'm looking for is that the bottom stem of this design I want it to be Actually, it's not the bottom stem. It's actually this little blue petal that I'll point out to you in a second. I want that to be exactly on the center vertical line of my layout um, pieces of paper here. So as I'm starting to approach it, I'm letting up, and I'm going to zoom in using my View tab and zooming in just a little bit more because I want you to notice. You can see the green boundary box here. As I begin to approach this vertical um, positioning line. When I get exactly on top of it, it is going to actually turn green. Did you see that? What happened there? I'm going to continue to move it, but I want you to notice that it's dark black right underneath here. In here, because it's exactly on that vertical center, it has turned green. So that's pretty cool. That is one of the reasons why I like to do these things just a little bit slowly. So I really like the way that these two designs look side by side. I'm going to click off of them. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can see them. And I think what I want to do is I think that I'm going to duplicate them to make them um, mirror image themselves. So I'm going to select both of them. And the way that I did that is I just held down the control key on my keyboard as I was using my left mouse button to select them and I'm going to come back to the edit mode, I'm going to copy and paste. Again, you will notice on the design list that the next two have now been copied directly on top of the original two. This time I'm going to use my horizontal mirror tool 
flip them upside down and I'm going to once again just use my slow pokey method actually I think probably this time I'm going to go ahead and drag them even though I might have to do a little bit of extra positioning in a while um, because I just want to save a little bit of time as I'm working on this project so this time what's going to line up um, is actually going to be these little birds are going to be kind of uh, mirror imaging one another let's use our view and let's zoom in just a little bit and as I do this what I want to do is I'm going to position these birds um, in a manner that I just find attractive so what does that mean I think I'm going to space them just a little bit further apart okay um, not too far apart just a little bit so that they don't look like they're crowding one another um, as I look at them I might want to space them out far enough that they would look as if they have the same amount of spacing that I have between these two bird wings I think that might be pleasant to look at so I'm going to space them just a little bit further apart maybe not exactly symmetrical with those original ones but a little bit bigger get the gist of what I'm doing there okay I think that that's actually fine for what I'm working on right at this point and the next thing I'm going to do is again I'm going to zoom out just a little bit maybe quite a bit and I'm just going to take a look at that design. It's, to me, it's very pretty. Uh, the only thing that I believe that I will want to do with it is because my layout is longer than it is wide. And this is also somewhat of a rectangular shape. I'm going to rotate all of these designs and have them go in this direction rather than in this long skinny direction. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm using the control key, my left mouse button, I'm selecting all four of these designs. I'm going to come back to my edit tab and this time um, I want to you'd notice something because what would have been the logical thing to do would have been to be able to rotate all of these at one time. But you're going to begin to see that there are sometimes some stuff is not going to be available for us to use. And we'll see if it's going to let me rotate these. Sometimes you can rotate things by typing in using your keyboard once you click in this open space here for rotating. Um, and that is not becoming available to me right now. Let's see if it'll let me use the arrow buttons. And it's not letting me use the arrow buttons. So what does that mean for me? That means that we are going to have to do each one of these things. Oh dear, individually. And that can take quite a bit of time. So what do I want to do? I'm going to vertical mirror it. And that's not going to do it for me. I'm just going to play with some. I really don't want to have to redo this entire thing. That's just going to ruin my day. How about if we just leave it like that for now? So um, I can select all of these. And one of the things that I can do with them is I can center them. So once they have all been selected, I'll just hit my centering tool. Everything has now been positioned in the exact center of the layout um, screen. I can click off of them and there they are. And that's a really pretty orientation even though I don't have it rotated exactly like I would have wanted. And one of the nice things for you to remember about this layout mode is that you do have to play around with it quite a bit in order to get things like you want them. And as your design begins to grow, that's when you're going to begin to discover that, oh, I really wish I would have started off you know with this in mind that I was going to want my um, oval shape I'm going to call this an oval to be in this orientation rather than how it turned out so that I could have possibly done some better planning right from the very beginning to ease the uh, duplication and the moving around of the objects but like I said earlier when I started this uh, tutorial I wasn't really planning to make anything out of this that I would have really wanted to use so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to insert another design and having inserted another design I'm going to show you just a couple of other little um, ways that you can use some of the tools here in the layout mode of the program. So this is what my program has been doing. It's, I'm still getting this funny not responding message whenever I do select uh, my design tab to try to insert a design which is actually kind of awkward because then that leaves me with having to chat a little bit longer than what I might have wanted to do. So next of all, I'm going to pick uh, one more design. 
I don't know which one I want based on what's here. Let's just say I'm going to choose this sort of flowery looking thing. And it popped right into the middle of the screen. And you know what? That actually looks kind of nice, doesn't it? I don't like the colors of it, however. I'm going to zoom in on my view tab and just um, get a better feel for what does that design actually look like. Oh, let's see. I like it in the middle of the hoop. I think that that adds a nice little interesting element right there in the middle, but because the colors don't seem to go well with my blues and greens and sage green that I've got going on with my birds and flowers, I'm going to change some colors here. So in order to do that, just keep the item selected, come to your edit tab, come to your little rainbow tool that says colors and click on it and click on colors again. So I do like to change away from the Janome polyester thread palette because that really limits. It only has about 67 colors in it and really limits your color choices. So I'm going to come to the Robeson Anton just because there's more colors available. I think I'm going to change part of this, um, maybe this the yellow part of this design. How about if I change that into um, just a different shade of green? So I'm just going to scroll down here till I get to some of the green colors that are in this palette. And I'm just going to choose a nice emerald green. And once I selected it, um, you can see that it changed those yellows that were here. That was the first part of this design, and that's why it changed them automatically. All right, I like that just fine. I'm going to change this mustard yellow to uh, maybe. I'm not really fond of blue flowers, but I think what I'll go is this hot peony. Hot peony. That looks pretty nice. Okay, so once I've made my color changes, all I need to do is say OK to verify that those changes have been made. Now the reason why I wanted to make those color changes on this particular part of the design is because I'm planning to use this design again. I am going to copy and paste it. I'm going to drag it um, maybe somewhere around this area here. This time I am going to rotate it and I can do a couple of different ways of rotating. I can either type in this little screen here, 45 degrees, and then my enter button and it has rotated to a 45 degree angle. I like that just fine and I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, but I'm going to show you this. I'm going to undo so that it sends it back to what it originally was. Another way that I can rotate this design is that I can use these up and down arrows to manually rotate it. And you see, just to kind of give it a little bit more time for me to figure out, you know, what is the rotation that I want on it, I'm going to undo. That was method number two. And method number three is to select it again. And this time, holding down your right mouse button, you'll see that this little circle arrow came available. And all I'm doing is I'm just kind of slightly moving my mouse around and it is allowing this little flower to rotate. Um, so I think I like it about like that. I'm releasing my right mouse button and my design has been rotated to a place that I like it. Next, I'm going to use my cornering tool and when I select it, it has now copied and pasted that little flower four times into the corners of this embroidery design. And it's basically um, just based on the distance that it is from the center point of this layout mode. Okay, and as I mentioned before, the reason why I wanted to change the colors on this original one was because I wanted all of them to have the exact same color. Um, this is a time-saving measure. If I had decided after I had duplicated this and put it into the corners that I wanted to change the colors, it just would have taken me a lot more time to do it because I would have had to change each of those colors individually. And that would have taken quite a bit of time um, just accomplishing that. Okay, so those are just a couple of the tools that you can do um, quite effectively to start to create your layout uh, design on your layout mode. One other thing that I'm going to show you before I close out this video um, is I'm going to come back to my Home tab. And over here on the very far right of the screen, I've got this convert STX file. When I um, 
I actually, I don't remember it right at this moment, but I think that I might have mentioned this when I did the Horizon Link introduction class. The What Converting STX Files is, is a tool uh, where you are able to use some of the built-in decorative stitches that are in our embroidery machine on the sewing side of the embroidery machine, not on the embroidery side, but the sewing side. Um, STX is a format that when we create our own decorative stitches using the Stitch Composer program, it saves those decorative stitches as an STX format. What Janome has done for us in our Horizon Link Suite program is that they have created some of the decorative stitches that are in our embroidery machine sewing side and they have added them into this program so that we can use them to create lines and circles that we can um, then use in our embroidery designs. So basically what STX files are here in this um, part of embroidery link tool are these are decorative stitches that are going to be converted into embroidery files. Okay, um, so you are converting, which means you are changing something. You're converting an STX, which is normally just a regular decorative stitch file, and you're going to be converting it into an embroidery file. So I hope that that makes sense to you. When you first open this um, little tab up, it's going to, first of all, make you decide if you want to create a line or if you want to create a circle. And I think I'm going to create... Uh, I think I'm going to create a line first. Okay, and what has happened when I have decided that I want my line is that this navigation screen has opened up. And the last time I used my program, I was using some decorative stitches out of the quilting category of the STX files that have been inserted into this program. If um, I'm just going to go briefly through some of these things. The preview button has been selected. It has a check mark on it. So if I select any one of these stitches, I'm going to get a very um, basic idea of what that particular stitch looks like. Okay. Um, next thing I want you to notice, though, is that I can select this little arrow here in my Look In tab. And when I select it, you know, the navigation window is going to pop open so that I can move around a little bit and see where there's some other things at. Under Part way down on this screen, I just want you to notice again, this is just a navigation tool to show you the different parts of your computer and the storage places within your computer. You're going to see here where we're at is where we are in Documents, Horizon Link Suite, Created Stitches, and the quilting category has been opened up. Let's just say, for example, I want to come back to the quilting stitches. I'm just going to click on it. And these are the different categories of stitches that Janome has included as STX files to be converted into embroidery files. So um, I think what I'm going to do, and again, I just want to mention as well that each one of these categories are the same categories that are on your, on your sewing machine, sewing side of your embroidery machine, and they are not all of the stitches that are in your machine. So as you can see, when I selected the satin stitch category, there's only one stitch available. And it turns out that it's that pretty little um, curly cue kind of a design, which is a very nice embroidery design. I don't think that's what I'm looking for for my particular project. So I'm going to select created stitches once again. And this time I think I'm going to choose something out of the heirloom category. So I'm going to double click on it. Out of the heirloom category, Janome is only included four, five, six different stitches. Let's see what number six is. It's the cross stitch. Five is that pretty scallop. One is a little diamond. There's the ladder stitch. And this is kind of a little cross stitch sort of a design. Mm, I think I'll stay with this one right here. This is, this is going to be fine. So I will open it. When I open it up, this new little um, screen opens. And this function actually takes quite a bit of playing around with in order for you to get the results that you might want. A um, couple of different things to notice on here is that this is, uh, as the stitch was designed originally, this six millimeters means that this stitch pattern was a six millimeter long design. The total pattern length, this is an important one because this is going to be measured in millimeters and you may not be a person that understands millimeters as well as you do um, the imperial or English measuring system. And so 
Sometimes you kind of have to play around a little bit to get the results that you want. But basically what we are doing here is we are deciding how long of a line, and it's a line because I chose line when I first started. Well, I think I'm going to go for a line that is about mm, maybe the full or not quite the full length of my uh, square 23 hoop. Now square 23 means that it's 23 millimeters long. And so how about if I do this? How about if I say that I want this to be 23 millimeters uh, as my total pattern length? And if I just say that I want to um, open that up as this orientation for layout, so, because I'm thinking I want to put a line vertically along in here somewhere. Okay, so I needed to choose my layout, whether or not I wanted it to run horizontally in my hoop or vertically. And what this baseline means is um, either left, center, or right is actually going to be determined on how this uh, decorative stitch line is positioned within the hoop. Right now it's defaulted at center, and you can see right here that this green dotted line is indicating the center of this um, line of decorative stitches. If I select it to be left, it has popped the stitches to the top of this green line, um, which basically means that if I had been sewing this out on a sewing machine, this would be my needle. And this would be the direction that my machine would be stitching this design out in. So it would be on the left side of the um, decorative stitch foot. Hope that makes sense. So if I select right, what are you going to see? It's going to pop down to the right side of what would have been the decorative stitch foot. This would have been the center of your foot, uh, these would have been your toes, and this would have been your needle. Okay, so that makes some sense. What this does make a difference in is how the design is actually going to get positioned on the screen. As you play with this, it's going to make more sense what I actually mean by this. So you can zoom in on this um, design, you can zoom out on this design, do various things with it. All right, and I'm just going to put it back as a center, and I'm going to say I want to convert it. I'm going to close the screen and where did my design go? It went right here in the smack dab center of my screen. It did not come out like I thought it was. It just turned out to be a little tiny design and I think I'm going to delete it. While it's selected, I'm just going to hit the delete button. I realized what I did. Selected a line. Which was the one I chose? Was it that one? I think it was that one. Um, opening it. My total pattern length was as a single pattern. So each one of these little things was six millimeters long. Um, and that wasn't exactly what I wanted. So what do I really want to do here? Maybe I want to come back to that vertical number of cycles. Let's say we want to do this line 25 times. Now I've got a nice long line. Let's see if that's even going to fit in my hoop. Let's close it. Where is it at? There it is. You know, and it's kind of a nice little design, isn't it? Hey, how about if I position this to be right here? So if I did that one 25 times and I actually wanted it to be, um, what would I say? How about if I had wanted it to go all the way from underneath all of these flowers? That could look kind of neat, huh? And in that situation, I would have needed to make the line a little bit longer. I would have had to designate it as a, rather than a 25 cycle line. I keep forgetting which one I'm using. Did I do it 25 times? Number of cycles, let's make it 30 times. This time, because I did not rotate it in that other direction. Let's come to edit. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. A little bit longer this time than the first one. I'm just going to drag it to get a preview. Yeah, I like that a lot. So I'm going to delete this one. Selected it, hit the delete key. The new one here, I'm going to drag it on over and I'm going to position it. Uh, maybe about like that. The other thing I'm going to do with this is I am going to copy and paste it because I would like for it to stitch over itself two times just so that the actual decorative stitch thread shows a little bit better. Okay, 
on my design list. It's over here on the very bottom. Notice it didn't change what the orient the direction that the stitches are actually um, here in the design list. It doesn't view them as anything um, altered than how they would have been if they had been brought in originally. So remember this flower, this was the original uh, top, bottom, right, and left of this flower. Then I rotated it. It just duplicated it the, looking the exact same way. So I just want to make notice of that too. It does not change the actual rotation of the flower or the um, design, whatever it may be here in this design list. So don't let that confuse you, okay? So here it is. I'm going to hold down my control key and select both of those. I'm going to copy and paste them. And I'm going to use my arrow keys this time, and I'm going to do the slow pokey method of dragging them all the way across the screen. Oh, I probably won't because if I was going to be doing this for actual stitch outs, I probably would. But because I'm in a hurry to get this video done, I'm going to go ahead and just drag them on over and kind of eyeball it just a little bit and get it um, somewhat similar to what I have going on on the other side. Close enough for government <laughs> worker right this moment, okay? So I'm leaving it there, and that's good enough for my layout for right now. I'm going to come to my view button, and I'm going to zoom out again just to give you a little preview of what my design is actually looking at so far. And as I uh, decided to continue working on this, I could just continue with the same tools by adding in um, different elements of this design. Now, one of the things that um, I want to go over again before I close out this video is about your preview buttons for looking to, at what your actual printout is going to look like and how to adjust that a little bit to get the best results. So over on my Applications button, um, I, I can use this Applications button to get to my print options or because I have selected um, some of the functions that I currently use quite a bit and I've created my own little mini toolbar. Um, this is called the ribbon toolbar. Remember that from video number one. And one of the functions I have on here is my print preview button because I do use it a lot when I'm working with embroidery designs and then my printer settings buttons. So first of all, I'm going to just have you take a look at what happens when I look at the print preview. All right. Um, you will remember that I have spoken many times about this in the past if you've taken embroidery classes with me. I don't care for this outline mode um, and primarily I don't care for it because it does not give you a real accurate representation of what the designs look like. It gives you a fairly accurate representation of the size of them but it's um, not super precise. It does give a very good job of creating the uh, center horizontal and vertical orientation lines that we can use um, with our cloth setter tool um, if you've purchased one of those for your embroidery machine or with the grids that come with your embroidery hoops and those are going to be the exact center of those grids or of your cloth setter marking okay um, I'm going to turn that off oh but one of the things you could do also is you could just scroll through the pages of your design to just see all the different parts of the design okay but I'm going to come to my printer settings under print setup I'm changing from the outline mode to the color template mode and I'm going to say OK and this time when I'm looking at my print preview you're going to see that I'm seeing the um, the design almost identically to what it looks like on my screen and this is the mode that I prefer to print out my templates in okay so one other thing about what layout mode does is it does not create embroidery designs for you to actually stitch out what it is creating for you is it's creating a picture of your layout and so what is going to happen is you are going to save this picture of your layout and you're going to print it on your own printer and um, then you're going to trim these pieces of paper along these little lines here that you can see for your corners and you're going to tape them together with some scotch tape you're going to slit the or cut little holes using a hole punch along your center and your right top left and bottom of each one of these orientation marks and you're going to mark your fabric using those very precise um, positioning marks that will help you to get your embroidery stitched out beautifully on your embroidery machine okay 
So that's what the layout mode is. It, it creates a picture file for you so that you can create your embroidery design on your embroidery machine. And again, it is not saving the actual embroidery designs in these positions. It's only saving them as a picture. So I could come up here to my print button and I could print this out if I so chose to, but I'm not going to right now. So my printer opened up. I would choose to um, print all of the pages. Uh, you can adjust some of the properties. Um, basically, you cannot change this into a black and white image. It is going to want to print it as a color image. You are going to have a quality setting that you can change, but you will not be able to change this to a black and white. Or maybe you will be able to. I don't know if it's going to, because mine says that it's printed grayscale is turned off. Maybe it will let me. High quality gray or black ink only. I guess it might let you. Hey, I might just learn something new, friends. Okay, anyway, I'm going to cancel. I don't want to print this out right now. I'm going to show you how I'm going to save it so that you can use this again or continue to work on it again at a later date. So one of the things I had forgotten to mention and I should have at the beginning of the video was when you first begin to work on your layout mode, just to avoid a catastrophe of um, maybe your power goes out or your power cord gets disconnected or something happens to your computer and uh, your program shuts down, you would lose your work if you had not started off by saving it right from the very beginning. And so remember that you really should always start off by uh, starting out your layout design and then pretty soon after you've begun your layout, come up here to your Applications button and start a Save As um, function so that you will not accidentally lose all of your work. So I clicked Save As. Last time I saved a design, uh, I was also working on a layout design for this class that I am teaching at the Sewing Center. It's in my Classes category and it's in my AccuSetter Workshop folder. And that's where I want to save this one as well. So um, you can give your file a name and you need to give it a name. It's always going to default at untitled.eld. What ELD is, is it's an embroidery layout design file. And that's the only option when I select the Save As type that this is going to give us when we're in the layout mode because it is, as I said before, only creating a design that is a picture, not an actual embroidery design. Okay. I'm going to change this to, I'm still clicking in that file name box so that everything turns blue there and I'm going to type in my name and I'm going to call it second layout because I don't want to change, um, overwrite this first layout that I was working on on another project. Okay, so I'm calling it second layout. It is an embroidery layout design and I'm going to say save. And now my design is saved and it's ready to close it out if I so choose to or um, want to open it up again. All right, because it is safely saved, I'm going to close this. And I'm just going to show you that if next time I want to open it up again, I can come back to my embroidery link tool and open it up, come to my layout mode. Uh, this time again, it's defaulting to those two pieces of paper wide by um, one high. But what I want to do is I want to open my design and continue working on it. So I come to my Applications button. I will come to the Open tab. And it's going to want to open a multitude of designs um, when I'm in this layout mode. But what I'm going to do is come to my Documents folder, which is where I had my embroidery design, my embroidery layout saved in my folder. Classes. It was my second layout. I select it and I say open. And there it is once again for me to continue to uh, work on this layout. Okay, so hopefully that will uh, give you a brief little orientation about how to use your layout mode of your embroidery link tool. Get you a little bit excited and um, get you up and running on doing some layouts. You can do some really great stuff with this little program. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned a lot. Thanks for watching.